the rattlesnake has the most feared snake bite in North America. But how does the snake actually kill you? And what does the venom do to the human body? Today, we're going to simulate a rattlesnake bite by adding venom to human blood. I'm Spencer Hoffman, and it's my mission to uncover the secrets of the natural world. Over the years, I've studied the venom of tons of incredible creatures, but when it comes to venomous animals, the rattlesnake reigns supreme. I'm in Texas with Jack from Jack's World of Wildlife, and we're gonna be milking a huge western diamondback rattlesnake to find out exactly what happens if a rattlesnake bites you. All right, you got the tube? I got the tube. Let's see if this works. You couldn't already tell, what we've got in this bag right here is a rattlesnake. And Gage here is our snake wrangler. With a large, cantankerous viper, there is no one that I would trust more with this task. Now what he's doing is he's using this tube. Rattlesnakes are extremely strong. One wrong move could be a hospitalization event, if not death. This tube is only so wide. Once the snake is inside the tube, we can actually grab it further down its body and it can't whip around and bite. So this restricts the snake's movement, giving us a lot safer of a time when we go to actually extract the venom. Quite a hefty snake. Honestly, but I think that was a lot better than chasing it around the room with a tube, don't you think? Yeah, but here's my- We can probably stick its head out and- That's exactly what I was about to say. All right, so it's tubed, so we're gonna reorient and uh, get the- uh, our venom table setup. So now we have to actually get the venom. And to do that, we have state-of-the-art technology here. We have some vials with plastic wrap and rubber bands over them. But the idea is these are actually a simple membrane that functions not unlike the skin of a prey item or an attacker. When a snake bites you, they're gonna feel their fangs go under your skin. And that sort of stimulus is going to encourage them to pump that venom in. You know, this snake is stressed out. It, it's going to very readily bite. So the hope is we can get it to just latch onto one of these containers, pump it full of venom, which we can then use for our full experiment. Let me know when you're ready. He's angry. Stained our table. You got him under control? Yeah. All right. Cool. Plus, uh, look at that. Deposited more than enough milky yellow fluid venom of the Western Diamondback rattlesnake, as well as tore up our venom collection. A little, a little frightening. Yeah. Uh, wow. Look at that venom. Milky yellow. And when I tell you this is a substance you do not want to get in your body, this stuff is gnarly. We're actually about to see very soon exactly how gnarly it is. We're using a syringe to sort of draw the venom into a container that we can then put into blood under the microscope, but we do not want to touch it at all. The smallest cut, a paper cut, anything on your finger, if you get that venom in there, sure, it'll be a lot less venom than if you were bitten by the snake, but that's still rattlesnake venom getting into your bloodstream, and that's very serious. This is a very dangerous vial here. Yeah, I'm make sure it Don't doesn't... touch the sides of this orange thing, because the needles will go straight through the edge. And then let's throw this away before it gets on anyone. Now, this is the fun part. I've done venom extraction experiments before with centipedes, with spiders, with copperheads a few times. You know that I love every excuse I can get to bring the microscope out. Almost more than even seeing these snakes in the wild, getting to see for myself just how powerful their venom is, to see it actually eat away at blood cells is gonna be so cool. And it's a hemotoxin, it attacks the blood. So the best way for us to see its action is to look at how it affects blood under the microscope. Now, before I show you that, um, this right here is what healthy blood looks like, healthy human blood. You have the red donut shaped cells, a relatively even distribution. They kind of still have fluid. They're not clumping or anything. They're just kind of free flowing in the slide. Now have a look at the rattlesnake venom slide. And let me know down below what you're seeing. Can you see the difference here? It is, it is frightening. Actually, it, it is frightening to see with my own eyes what these snakes can do to you. The first thing I'll notice is the way that the distribution of the cells has changed. 
we see patches where they're thicker and more clumped together and areas where they're thinner, almost like they've started to form this like clumpy matrix, like a, like a gel. You can see spots where there's a lot of pink just in the slide. That's, that's hemoglobin. That's the contents of the blood cells spilled out into the slide by venom popping the actual cells. And you can see fragmented, shredded bits of cells everywhere. This is not something that you want to get in your body. This is a powerful, dangerous chemical. And to me, it's so remarkable how these, over millions of years, these, these reptiles have evolved such a potent toxin. And you can see right here just how powerful the rattlesnake actually is. This is a force of nature. These snakes don't want to bite us. If we behave ourselves in their habitat and if we respect their environment, we don't have to ever be in a situation where we're in danger of a snake bite. You can see right here just what this snake is capable of. And to me, that makes me admire these animals even more. This is something that we shouldn't be fearing, but we should absolutely respect and admire, even if it's from a distance. At the end of the day, these snakes are not monsters, but they are amazing things and vital parts of the secret world all around us. Now, if you wanna learn more about these rattlesnakes and see the incredible adventure I was able to go on in Texas to catch my first ever Western Diamondback, check out this video right here. Hope to see you there, but until next time, don't forget to get outside and find your own adventure.